Dear brothers and sisters in Christ, today we celebrate the solemnity of the two great apostles in the church, Peter and Paul. It's amazing what the church does in choosing to celebrate these two apostles together. We know from our reading of the scriptures that Peter and Paul had their own differences. Their perception of reality of the faith differed. And yet they had one common understanding that they shared. It was their belief in the Lord. Peter himself was a disciple of Christ one who walked with him on the streets of Galilee and accompanied him to Jerusalem. Paul is an apostle of the Lord who never physically was present where Christ was. And yet their testimony or their witness to the faith is never discredited on the basis of where they were in their relationship with the Lord, whether it was physical or spiritual. They all were witnesses, and they all proclaimed that they are witnesses to the risen Lord. My dear brothers and sisters in Christ, tradition calls Peter the apostle of the Jews, and it calls Paul the apostle of the Gentiles. And yet you and I know that today when we read their teachings, they inspire all of us. And they somehow bring us to an encounter with the Lord. Tradition also associates Peter with leadership, authority, and as we heard in today's gospel, he is given the keys that speak of authority. And that authority is understood as being exercised in binding and loosing. And yet Paul is greatly known as the preacher one who proclaims the charismatic message of the gospel. In celebrating these two apostles together, we celebrate two great aspects of the church that can never be overlooked. Peter represents authority, the authority that is invested in the church. And Paul represents the missionary dynamism of the church. If our church is to be alive and alert to the message of the gospel, we need this too. We need a figure of authority. We need someone who is open to the promptings of the Holy Spirit and who is reaching out in the proclamation of the gospel. In the first reading, we have the Apostle Peter being set out to go and proclaim the good news. He is set free by the angel so that he can find time to go and proclaim the good news. Is that same Peter who will, in his proclamation of the good news, encounter many hardships? In the end, he will lay down his life for the Lord. Paul himself, in the second reading, speaks about his calling and where it has taken him to. It seems to me it's written towards the end of Paul's life and he's looking back and reflecting on the life that was and is not disappointed. He's, he looks back and he says, I have fought the good faith. I have fought, fought the good fight. In fighting the good fight, he has kept the faith. 
and these are words of consolation to him. He now awaits the crown that is promised to those who are faithful to the Lord. And so, my dear brothers and sisters in Christ, in celebrating today's feast, in celebrating these two great apostles, who all, in one way or the other, end up shedding their blood, witnessing to the risen Christ, we are challenged to value the life that is given to us in the Christian faith. We are challenged to value the faith that has been given to us. We are challenged to value the traditions that are found within the church, that, has been, that have been handed down to us. Today, as it were, the church says to us, we must look at these two great apostles and draw lessons from them. Looking at the diversity that exists between them, we realize that being a member of the church does not call that we all must think alike. We can all serve God and be faithful to him in our own ways of doing things. The words that are said by Paul that I fought the good fight can as well have been said by Peter because he fought the good fight. I am reminded, dear brothers and sisters in Christ, of that great movie where Paul, Peter is fleeing from the persecutions in Rome. And as he gets out of the Roman city, he encounters the Lord. And he asks him the question, Covadis Domini, where are you going, Lord? And the Lord says to him, I'm going to die again. I'm going to Rome to die. And Peter is taken aback. He is fleeing from the persecution. And immediately he makes the journey back to, home, to Rome. My dear brothers and sisters in Christ, this feast of today asks us the question, Co Vadis, where are we going in our journey of the faith?